Hello and welcome back to the Give and Go. I'm your co-host Reynoso here with my boy. Soltero, what's up guys? And today we got a little bit of a different stream because producer Rudd is out of town today. So we're going to deal with a, a one shot right here, which I actually have to focus. So could you keep the viewers entertained for a little bit? I got to focus the camera. I mean, I have nothing to say in this episode. I, I apologize from the get-go, guys. Um, Atletico losing today. Barcelona losing as well. Spanish football lost today. And the trend's only going to continue with Real Madrid losing tomorrow against Manchester City. So just get prepared. If you're any La Liga fans out there, it's over. Spanish football's dead. It's dead. It's dead, it's man. Dead. What a result today. Let's get right into what the chat is talking about to start off. Barcelona against PSG. Now, for context, Saltero was fully, fully in the Atleti Dortmund match. So, yeah. I'm sure you don't have much to say about just the, the I, actual happenings. No, right? no, no, no. But I was watching this game full on, head on. I was enjoying this match. And my goodness, what a game. The first question that I have for you guys that I want to know right away in the chat is that red card. Was it a justifiable red card, in your opinion, from Araujo, who got beat by Barcola, beats him and is essentially one-on-one -on -one with the keeper because Kubarsi was to his right, but he was not going to catch up. Araujo brings him down right outside the box. Maybe could have been a pen. I was open to it. But he gets a red card 30 minutes into the match having to deal with an entire hour being down a man for Barcelona. That, in my opinion, defined the match, bro. That defined it because from that moment on, PSG was completely dominant. And credit to them, they did their best to actually take advantage of the advantage that was given to them. Yeah. Whereas a lot of teams might have disappointed, PSG stepped up and laid, what, four goals on them in this match? Mbappe getting a brace in the process. But I want to know, what do you guys think about that red card call? Was it correct? Was it just really harsh? Or was it the wrong call overall? Let's look at the chat here. I'm seeing, yeah, Water Drill says 100% red. In what world is that not a red, says Jaime Galvan. Sadly, yes, it was, says Matt Universe. I agree with you guys. I agree because, dude, I saw it over and over again. Initially, I thought, you know what? This is a pretty harsh call. It's pretty harsh. 30 minutes into the match, and he didn't like completely annihilate him once he got past him he just kind of pulled him off and he brought him down but looking at the textbook looking at the fact that Barcola was going to be one-on-one -on -one with Ter Stegen there was nothing else to be said bro it yeah. was a red it's just yeah. so harsh because boom you're down a man for an entire hour I think that's my take on it too you showed me it yep. when it happened very quickly live I glanced at it and my first take was I was like damn it it's a little soft it is but it also is a foul. Yeah, It's a soft foul, and unfortunately, the circumstance was it was one-on-one -on -one if the foul hadn't been done. Yeah. So it has to be a red due to that case. There's nothing else to be said, yeah. really. It's just really, really unlucky, though, if you're Barcelona, because, I mean, it's an understatement when you say red cards change games. And yeah, especially bro. when you're playing against Dembele, Barcola, Mbappe, you're, you're, gonna be, you're going to get cooked. Yeah. And unfortunately for Barcelona, I don't think anyone had a red card in mind. And I think that moment really shook them. No, bro, they got cooked. It was stir fry. It was kimchi. It was carne asada, bro. <laughs> whatever you like, whatever the menu wanted, bro, they got cooked. But here's the thing, dude. What really, I guess, kind of upset me in a sense was that I'm really mad that this is how it played out ultimately. Because yeah, yeah. Araujo just made a really dumb mistake. But Barcelona was dominating PSG, bro. They were up two goals on him by a beautiful Lamine Yamal drive that then, where he then slid the ball through to Rafinha, who gets a beautiful finish on it. They go up 4-2 on aggregate, and they look completely in control. I saw a comment here that said, PSG fans say thank you to the to the refs because had it not been for that call, this game would have been much different. And it really would have, bro, Like because Barcelona, even getting the result away from home, they we predicted last episode that, you know what, it was the only team where we flipped on our prediction. We said, Barcelona looks like the favorite to win it now. Yeah. And they were doing that 30 minutes in, but then that stupid red card, bro. I can't, if you're a P, if you're a B, if BSD, if you're a Barca fan, I mean, you must be so frustrated with that. So frustrated, yeah. bro, because it really did define the entire match. Yeah, there's nothing you can do either. <sighs> You'll never really know what this game could have been. It's yeah. nobody's fault, but that that's football. That's football. If you, if you make clumsy mistakes, you will get punished for them. And unfortunately for Barcelona, it just happened to be in this major, major. match in Spain, bro. Yeah. But my question is, is once PSG started to mount a comeback, clearly Barcelona should have had 
some sort of response to that. Did they? They had a did couple. Did they try to bunker they had a defensively, or did they try to counter a PSG? How did they yeah. respond once PSG got that? Oh, first goal? initially they bunkered in. Initially they okay. bunkered in, but throughout the match they brought in Joao Felix, they brought in Fran Torres off the bench. Okay, they went offensive towards the last ten minutes. I would say they had about two chances. Rafinha had a really nice uh, drive into the box oh, where yeah. he just kind of sk- uh, slid the ball out wide, and then Lewandowski was like on a kind of weird two on one, three on one type play with. Fred Ferran Torres open to his left to his right hand side decides not to hand the ball over decides to not hand the ball off to him shoots it from outside the box gets blocked and Ferran Torres looked pissed off in that moment man because he was wide open yeah. for a shot they tried but a lot of these opportunities were just really tough to make because ultimately PSG always had that extra man whether it was on defense or where it was in the midfield they always had the advantage but for the most part they tried to bunker in and it was that Joan Cancelo penalty that ultimately did them in man like that really dumb mistake where he lunges Lunge, in yeah. and he brings on Dembele to then lead to Kylian Mbappe getting the penalty goal shout out to my boy that was the moment for me where I was like, okay, Barca's done. There's no coming back from this. They might have a couple chances, but there's no way that they get back into this match, especially because if they scored and tied it, they would have gone to extra time, bro. And I mean, that it just would not have played out for him. The deal was done once Araujo got that red card, and it's so disappointing. Let's look at these messages right here. We have Mateo, uh, Mateo Pegasus, Super Chat, $5. Thank you, bro. Who was the defender pocketing Mbappe? Low key, man. Y'all remember last episode? Y'all were going at me. <laughs> for the whole Mbappe allegations, for the things I said about Mbappe in comparison to Holland, I said, let's wait, give him the second leg, and what does he do? He gets a brace in this match with a beautiful penalty kick and then a giveaway goal towards the end. We have another super chat here from Fernando Ortiz, who says, moment of silence for Saltero. We will get into that very, very soon. Appreciate we'll get into you, that Fernando. very, very soon. We have... Starless sign 28 two dollars. Thank you, my friend. No Atletico semifinal match on my birthday. Damn, that would have been a dope birthday. Ha- yeah. Happy early birthday yeah. either way, though, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, man. The the energy in the room is. I mean, we have no producer, Rudd. Saltero's a little soulless right now. Mm. Uh, the energy in the room is uh very clear. It's very stark. Barca fans in the chat seem a little sad too. Overall, pretty crazy what we saw happen today with both matches ending up with the same score. 5-4 in aggregate. Bro. Yeah, and, and both matches insane. getting flipped, right? Yeah. Both both teams yeah. uh, the, who had the lead going into the game losing losing out, man. Yeah. Like, it's pretty ridiculous. But, yeah, what a quarterfinal. What and a quarterfinal. I, I think <laughs> when you look at the matchups that we have tomorrow, it's just going to continue. <laughs> like, this, is gonna, this might go down as one of the most high goal-scoring quarterfinals ever. Ever. I just yeah. don't know how you realistically repeat something like this. Nine goals in each game? That's yeah. insane. And, and just to kind of focus in on the PSG Barca match, yes, exactly. The super chats are exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, Agel says $2. Thank you, my friend. Nuno Mendes and Barcola really impressed today. That's what I want to talk about, man. A lot of these PSG players, given they were up an entire man for 60 minutes, they did step up. Nuno mm. Mendes, Nuno Mench was incredible incredible one of the best fullbacks in the world when he's healthy and and he's in form i thought fabian ruiz Ruiz was really good today as one of the more uh the the midfield stalwart that he is vitinha has stepped up huge in both legs scoring a goal in each one i thought that was big and then dembele to me is the biggest surprise bro two goals against his former team actually showing up when it matters the most and scoring the first goal for for psg i thought that was big and then barcola he had his fingerprints all over this entire match man and then finally when it was needed to you know to to for the dagger we need that dagger goal that's where Kylian Mbappe stepped in but I just think PSG on all fronts was incredible today man I was really really impressed from that because like I said they could have disappointed they could have succumbed to the pressure they could have looked even worse losing on this result not getting a result being up an entire man but they stepped up I give them their credit but man what a match what a match we have some more super chats here Michael Talks Football my boy guys go follow Michael Talks Football one of the best football YouTube accounts out there this man covers everything Thing, and his ball knowledge is insane. Sabitzer was fantastic tonight. Yeah, I mean, we, we'll talk about that. Good. We're, we're, good. we're getting there. We're gonna. We're getting there. We're getting there. But thank you, Michael. Uh, Abhishek Duba, Dubé says, "I think the referee wasn't up to the mark. He just wasn't this match level." I think he made a lot of uh, controversial calls, but I do think they were the correct calls. I think overall, if you look at the whole string of the match, they did favor PSG, but sometimes it just happens, man. Like some yeah. balls just hit 
a Barcelona player on the way out, it's a PSG corner kick. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. a couple fouls go yeah. your way. Like it really was a situation where they did get the more favorable calls, but it was justified in my opinion. Alan Soltero. Same last name as you. Hey, shout out, Soltero. Your big bro, <laughs> low bro cousin. What is this, man? $2. Shout out to Dembele. That's what I'm saying. Uh, shout out to Dembele. He deserves credit because <laughs> I've just seen that man not step up in so many big situations for him to finally do it. It's like a it's like a gift from God, man, truly. And PSG fans must be excited that he actually came through for them. Let's look at some of these chats, man. Let's see what you guys are sending in. Bleacher Boy says, it was a pin for Mbappe and a bounce around in the box. That is true. The goals were simple today. I mean, that second one Kunde completely gifted it to him it like just bounced to him and then he scored but look man I'm gonna I'm just gonna look at the score sheet it says brace from Mbappe in a yeah, quarterfinal yeah, Champions yeah, League yeah. matchup that's the danger there I love it Aurin Zarian says Barca will be back I definitely think they will but man their season I think this is how their season ends no trophies man no Copa del Rey no Champions League and no La Liga a trophy less season for Barcelona once again and now Xavi set to leave given that he left this match with a red card yeah that yeah Xavi's been mouthing off on the sidelines as of late I don't know if it's the pressure just getting to him or what it is but yeah for Barcelona honestly I would if if I'm a Barcelona fan I would actually be okay that y'all made it to the quarterfinals. Actually be way more than happy because I think at the beginning of this season, to say you would be in the quarterfinals and almost on the brink of a semifinals, that is like, crazy. I think I'd be yeah. asking a lot of this Barcelona team that, in my opinion, is still kind of trying to figure things mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. So overall, yes, it's very disappointing, especially with a red card, but I think Barcelona should somewhat keep their heads held up high. That, that is true. Yeah. Overall, yes. But I think the prospect of what could have happened up 4-2 in control against PSG, they get they make it through. They face off against Dortmund, who they can also oh, defeat. Yeah, they would have. They, ha they had a route to the final, bro. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's the that, part. That's, that's frustrating. That's the part, bro. An yeah. alcohol red card is what got in the way from Barca being in the final against who knows who. But, man, in a season where you wouldn't have expected it, to be in a Champions League final would have been crazy. That's now all gone. They have a classical coming up, but... I guess that's it, man. Yeah, that's about <laughs> it. If they win that game, they'll put a little pressure on Madrid, actually. It'll only yeah. be a five-point gap. Eddie uh, Fifi says, nowadays you can't have high blood pressure and be a Barcelona fan at the same time, <laughs> dude. That, that's got it. That's true. That's true, man. That cannot be good for you, bro. My prayer is up to you. Moises Reyes, $2. Thank you, my friend. Let's be honest. Dortmund 4-1 in that, in that one. Uh, we got a Dortmund fan in here. Dortmund, yeah. su no, Dortmund no, absolutely. super chat. I mean, you should be celebrating, but I saw a comment here that says, I've never seen Soltero look so soulless. Uh, I think I, I'm sensing that right now from you, brother. And we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get to your therapy <laughs> session. I want everyone to be ready, but I want to acknowledge the Barca fans first. Paid referee, like how Mbappe is being praised for being gifted two goals. Okay. Tarek Dajani says, was the red card deserved or any other calls questionable? We talked about that at the top of the show. I do think ultimately it was deserved, although I understand why it's controversial. I do because it was a little soft and it was early in the match and Barcelona was in full control. But you look at the play, it is a red card. He was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper and he had a really good chance of scoring. So it is a red card in my opinion. Mateo Pegasus, see, while you're, while you're busy being a uh, soulless mm. i'm busy having to worry about fucking writing a letter right now dude five pages an apology letter is gonna come soon we will acknowledge that it, we're gonna acknowledge that very soon because y'all become very eager to see that i get it but let's just finish off with barca against psg what are y'all's final thoughts on this match send them in the chat i want to know what you guys think about what happened in this game how y'all feeling barca fans are y'all all right psg fans are there any of y'all because i don't actually see any, any psg fans in the chat right now man <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we haven't seen one bro that's true yeah. actually yeah. Yeah. i guess they, yeah i mean it's tough tom it's talks space. films two dollars vitinha looked amazing in both legs dude i agree vitinha looked incredible his finishing in both legs was yeah. phenomenal two yeah. goals that i didn't know vitinha really had that in his locker he pulled out some worldies in this in this uh, quarterfinal yeah he, he did and that that's also something i want to talk about because when the season started, when the Champions League season started, I stated that one of the reasons why I don't think Barca or PSG can win the Champions League was because of their midfield specifically with uh, Warren, Zaire, Emery, Vitinha, 
And then at the time, Ugarte was Ugarte, getting the starts, right? Yeah. And all these guys are under 23 years old. Vitinha is yeah. still only 22 years old. And I use their midfield as the sole reason for why I didn't see them progressing because I just think that that inexperience would show itself out over time. I thought the the lack of time in big moments and big stages might have worked against them. But I like what Luis Enrique did today, starting Fabian Ruiz instead of uh, Ugarte, who's a bit of an older player with more experience, and then giving Vitinha the keys of the midfield to really shine and kind of what was Verratti's role, man, either progressing the ball forward, mm -hmm. handing the ball off, or slinging it from outside the box, except showing a little bit more clinicality outside the box, in my opinion, I would say, because he's had some incredible finishes so far, not just in these two games, but this entire season, scoring so many goals from outside the box. He actually stepped up, and I want to give him his credit because I didn't think he would. I really didn't think he but, would ultimately. But but that's that's why I'm not really high on this PSG side because we don't actually know if they would have stepped up. Like, we, it, circumstantially, they did That's up a man. Great point. But I, I just can't really give this to them fully because I don't know if they would have been able to pull mm. this off. They conceded to start the game. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, okay, this is PSG. They are underneath Barcelona. The red card was fair. It happens in this game, and they took full advantage. I'll give them credit for that for sure, as you already have. But it's just like... I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think the criticisms of PSG still fully hold. Yeah. And I think you have to take all of that into consideration oh, going to. into the semifinal. Yeah. And then you know, they get Dortmund in the semifinal. So Crazy. probably you have to take those same considerations going into the final. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Yeah, uh, just I, I don't want to overhype it. I agree. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. I don't want to give them too much credit because you're right. Barca was in control, bro, until that red card. They really would, were. And I cannot reiterate that enough. But... Those are the limitations that this PSG side has. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, it didn't limit them in this certain scenario. Ozzy Car, $2. Thank you, bro. You can't use chat GPT for that letter, bro. I swear <laughs> to God, man. I really was thinking about it. I really was. You but here's the thing. You should learn German. Here's, no, you, should, no. you should write it in German. Five in German, bro? In German. Five pages in German? Mm -hmm. This is. A, I'll get into the semantics of the letter very, very soon because I do want. I have a lot to say about that. I really, I really do. We have a super chat from Juan Rodarte, ten dollars. Four more goals given up by Barca, prelude to El Clasico. I mean, yeah. Uh, it was what, a red card. The red <laughs> card, bro. Yeah, all four after the Lord. red card. They had the Frankie de Jong at center back at one point. They bring on Inigo Martinez. I mean, I'm not going to be harsh on them. They have a great defense, and they were controlling the match. But, yeah, the Clasico is coming up. I don't think Barca is favored to win that matchup. We have a super chat from Ab Yes, from Abishik Dubé, Dubé. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, man. What's your thoughts on Dortmund versus PSG? Also, there's a reason why there's no PSG fans. Also, what's your prediction for tomorrow's <laughs> games? We're going to get to this. We're going to get to this because we want to preview these next coming matches and we mm -hmm. are going to react to the Dortmund match. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're right. I, I think I'm seeing why there's no PSG fans in the chat. I just don't think they exist. I don't know if they exist. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Truly. Diehard PSG fans. Diehard PSG fans, yeah. I mean, jerseys everywhere, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what are you saying, bro? <laughs> a few... Let me read a few of these chats. To Yolk says, Barcelona made silly mistakes. They lost because of their mistakes. That penalty was a mistake by Cancelo and also Lewandowski being selfish not closing on Vitinha I agree with those things yeah yeah and that's honestly how I'm taking this result for PSG is that it's more so that Barcelona lost this game due to everything that he just listed out right now again credit to PSG for taking advantage of Barcelona's mistakes but this one's all on Barca yeah this one's all yeah. on Barca ultimately it is it is it's not like unlucky it's not no. yeah it's none of that no. they, they shot themselves in the foot here Araujo ultimately does have to be more discipline in that situation and not you know not concede a foul there man let him go by if you have to and rely For on a real. great goalkeeper and Teich Sagan Shad Kachu says Lua Leva has to go one play where he had Ferran and Rafinha in better positions and had better chance on goal Xavi made a bad uh, Xavi made bad bad changes I would rather have Lamine than, Lama, than Leva Lamine had more motor than Leva that's true uh, and, and Lamine Yamal I think his he's honest when he defends he'll track back he actually does track back and he'll slide in he'll get a ball in and I appreciate that and then he's a little bit more dangerous on the counter as well whereas Leva I think he's been a little off this season I understand Xavi's thinking but either one I don't think would have made that much of a difference 
Uh, what else we got here? What else we got here? Uh, imagine their classicer and final. Let's go, same as 2013. That is in play. It's on. It's That's on. That's crazy. <laughs> that is in play. That is crazy. Well, with that being said, then let's go over to Borussia Dortmund versus Atletico Madrid, where Borussia Dortmund got the result against Atletico Madrid to kick them out of this tournament. Saltero's beloved Atleti side, a team that he was vouching for, that he was dying for, and that he ultimately said would go see them in person if they progress to the semifinals. And we're I said, if Dorman wins this match, they get an apology letter from me that's five pages long because mm-hmm. I've dug them the entire season. My friend, I'm going to hand it over off to you. If there's anything to be said, please have at it. The floor is yours, my friend. I'm not going to say anything surprising. If you watch the game or if people in the chat watch the game, you'll know exactly what happened, right? I'd like to go very predictable. I previewed it in our Champions League preview. I talked about it in our stream or after the first leg. Atletico only win games this season when we bully our opponent, when we win matches, the physical duels in the midfield. Ten minutes into this match, after the game had settled, the ball was all in Dortmund's hands. And when that happens, we've lost 95% of those matches this season. So... Even though we got back into the game through a Mats Hummel's own goal, and then honestly a really good finish from Angel Correa, it was just, I, I was never fully convinced of this Atletico performance today. When you think about the two goals that we got in the first leg, it was because we were dominating them physically, winning the ball high up the pitch, and that's how we created havoc. Got two goals, almost got a third one through Samuelino, and that was it. That's when we win games, and that's how we won the first leg. I didn't see any of that today. I didn't see any of that aggression, any of that midfield vigor, none of that today. And so after the 20th minute, I was like, okay, yeah, this is just going to be a crapshoot. We either get a little lucky, kind of like we did against Inter Milan, or Dortmund kill us. And ultimately, yeah, we got killed. We let in four goals today, bro. Four goals and it was 11 v 11. It's not like the Barcelona PSG game where there's a red card for over an hour. And that that's just unacceptable. You're not going to be able to go to a semifinal. You can't compete in a quarterfinal if you're always able to concede four goals. If that's on the cards, you're done. You're going to get you're going to get fucked, bro. And that's exactly what happened today. Uh, I mean that that's pretty much it. But the thing is, I'm not too surprised yeah. because I knew Dortmund could do this. Yeah. I knew that Dortmund could hold on to the ball. I knew that they could move it in a really progressive fashion. And when Jaden Sancho's on the ball, when Mats Hummel's finding a wide open Julian Brandt with a nice, beautiful little yeah. chip ball, we're going to get our lines broken. And that happened six, eight, ten times today. And of course, we're going to concede. We don't have that defensive grit anymore to really shut out opponents that move the ball quickly. We just don't got it anymore. Yeah. So if we don't win that midfield battle, we're going to get cooked defensively on the defensive end. And that, that's exactly what happened today. So four goals. We get two, four, two. It could have been worse, honestly, if I'm really being honest. So, uh, yeah, that that's my take on this. I'm not surprised. I'm just disappointed that we didn't give a little more on the defensive end in the midfield. In the midfield, uh, we just yeah. didn't work in the yeah. midfield at all. We let Dortmund come yeah. at us, and that's fine if we limit if if we limit Dortmund's possession but we didn't limit it at all throughout the entire 90 minutes we were completely fine bunkering in and letting them attack us and uh, yeah that's just literally a recipe for Atletico to lose yeah yeah I, I really felt like you know I was watching the game on and off I felt like the door was always open for Dortmund man like all right it wasn't midfield always. battles bro they weren't retaining possession they the game wasn't played in the middle of the park it was just back and forth <laughs> and in that sort of scenario Atletico is never going to win because they're no. not that type of team bro no you're really not and Dortmund thrives on that fast-paced movement and we saw it time and time again the way they tortured that left wing to start off to get both goals through that side and the way that they just constantly were on the attack even when they kind of held off a little bit they still have those opportunities because I think that is what their strategy is I think that's what Turgic was hoping to do and Atletico kind of played into it today yes you know and that's why I agree I agree with your disappointment uh, I wish I could have seen more from Atletico in that sense because even when it was tied 2-2 and it was favorable Atletico was a goal up on aggregate 
it never felt secure, man. Never, that anxiety never. was there. Never. That anxiety was always there. Never. Yeah. Sabitzer gets the ball on the left-hand side. He puts in a beautiful curling ball. Niklas Fulgrug jumps five feet in the air, <laughs> and he puts in a beautiful <laughs> header. I'm like, okay. we uh, Immediately, our two goals that we got is undone. And then four minutes later, Sabitzer scores a, scores a banger. Yeah. So it's just like it was never secure. Mm-hmm. Even though we were crawling back into the game on the road, it, none of it was secure. And again, even one of the goals was so cheap with Hummel's just getting a weird ass own goal yeah, like it yeah. was just not not ultimately a very poor performance from atletico um not not organizationally but just for me from like an, an athletic yeah. a physical the physical battles we just didn't want it today yeah and if we don't do that we always lose moises reyes uh sends a super chat asking if morata scores does that does that change the game i assume he's talking about that first opportunity yeah. like five minutes into the match what do you think um the thing is though is that right before that chance sabitzer missed a sitter so you could ask, you could reverse mm. the question and say, if mm-hmm. Sabitzer scores, does this game end six three or six mm-hmm. four, like whatever? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that miss matters at all because Dortmund, the way that they were playing today, the way that Atletico invited them to play, we were always going to concede three, four, five, six goals. Yeah, Tarek Dejani says, "Sorry for that loss, Altero. I appreciate uh, who it. Who will you be backing now in the competition, if anyone? Ah, uh, Manchester City." Yeah, Manchester City. Yeah. I, I mean, they're one of the best clubs in the world. They have some of the best players, one of the best coaches of yeah. all time. They're on one of the craziest runs in the Premier League yeah. of all, all right, time. All right, dude, he's just asking the team, bro. <laughs> fucking relax, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> fucking City Manchester fans. City, bro. <laughs> Luis Melo, ten dollars. One of our, one of my go-to's, man. My boy, Luis Melo. Thank you so much, my friend. Here's ten dollars to help convert Saltero's therapy sessions after Atletico lost. My heart goes out to you, and then a uh, salute emoji, I believe, or at least a sincere. Thank you, emoji, Luis. Man. I really appreciate that. That means that, a brother. lot. We'll buy him. What do you want with ten dollars? Some Chick Fil A or something? Get you some P Terry, <laughs> some water. Get you some food or something. Yeah, man. give me some. Get you man. a beer. I had a, I read a, a comment here. Daniel Lizarraga sounds Spanish to me. Uh, in my opinion, Atletico has to change all their defense. Our defense sucks, and Morata has to go as well. He missed an easy goal. Do you agree with these things? Uh, I mean, mainly yes. What I mean, Mario Hermoso has always been a uh, seven out of ten defender, right? He's yeah. never going to be an elite defender. He's never going to rise to an eight or nine average per game. You, Espilicueta is ancient. You know that's always going to hurt us. Ancient, it's, bro. It's, it's a tough. mummy. Axel Witzel is only getting older. He's losing his athleticism literally by the minute. Um, I mean, you, you, Stefan Savage is always injured. Same with uh, Chema Jimenez. They're always injured pretty much ha- like half the season every year. Yeah, the entire back line easily could go. I, I agree with it. They're, they're good players, but maybe, maybe their careers have maybe need to go elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying that they're mm-hmm. bad players or that they don't give everything for Atletico because they do and I always appreciate it but yeah there's definitely some changes at the back and for Morata I've always had this take on Morata he's a great goal scorer but he's never been clinical he's never really risen up to very very big occasions and him missing that little chip shot I'm not surprised by that at all Morata has been doing that his entire career but that's the thing is you have to accept that if you have Alvaro Morata on your team you have to know who he is so I know who he is and I'm happy to have him because he does get us a lot of goals and he commits everything to Atletico year in year out so I'm fine with Morata we just have to understand that he's not an elite striker yeah Guys, I'm seeing a lot of sat chats in here. I think it's time that we talk because we have 438 people in here. Please subscribe, comment, like, uh, thumbs up this stream so we can get some more people in here because I need y'all's input right now. The first topic was discussing Saltero and just personally how I felt this, about this Atletico match and what happened. The second topic, though, was dealing with me personally because if you weren't aware, I have been doubting Dortmund this entire season after the fallout they had last year where they lost the Bundesliga title on the very last day. I said, you know what? That mentally will break them. It will break this team and will they will not be able to bounce back from it this entire season. And then what do they do? They get drawn into the group of death in the UEFA Champions League with PSG, Newcastle United, and AC Milan, and they top it. Yeah. They top it, bro. Yeah. When I said they wouldn't even get out, they top it. And so I say, okay, I was wrong this time. They're going to get out in the round of 16 against a PSV team who at the time was undefeated in their, their domestic league. They're going to get out. Things will be fine. Dortmund finds a way to win. 
So I have to put up the bet. I have to put up the potential punishment in place because here we try to we try to hold ourselves accountable for our takes. We really do. Absolutely. There has to be a punishment for the things that we say if they end up being wrong. And so I said, if Dortmund beats your beautiful Atleti, I will write, handwrite a five-page letter to Dortmund that I will mail out to Germany or maybe even go visit Germany to deliver myself. <laughs> but here's why I want the chat to get involved. Let's discuss the rules of this letter because I had a great person comment that I can't use chat GPT, you know? They're already starting to like, they're already getting uh, really uh, controlling about what I should do. So let's yeah. talk about it. How should I approach this handwritten letter? I was thinking five pages, handwritten, single space, I can't, I can't double space this shit. And I just gotta write out, I gotta pour my heart out. I gotta, I gotta say my uh, apologies yeah. to Dortmund. Okay, yeah. And I gotta give them credit for everything they've achieved this season. So I wanna hear it, guys. What else, what criteria should be in place for this letter? One man says, XPO399, visit Germany. You will love it. I mean, Oktoberfest is right around the corner, bro. It is. It is. It is. And, you know, maybe we indulge a little in the German culture. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But this guy wants me to do it a little too much. Mohit Kumar says, write it in German. Yeah, I'm with him. Write it in German. Learn German. Learn, Learn their, German? Learn their mother tongue. <laughs> <laughs> a little Deutsch, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't write it and then translate it. <laughs> like, okay, you know, finesse okay. it a little bit and then try to like speak it maybe a little. Okay. You, maybe like film an entire video of me reading the letter. Yeah, yeah. And do an English and German version. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I kind of like that. That'd be kind of. I kind of like that. That'd yeah, that, that sounds respectful. <laughs> uh, write in Greek. Apologize to Julian Brunt. Half space. Two lines of waiting writing per one line of paper jesus christ half space is crazy uh right <laughs> half space not double space right in adjoining writing euros in germany five pages front and back is crazy guys jesus christ that's 10 pages that's 10 it's pages dissertation okay man. fair enough kiss germany especially Dortmund. fair enough okay fine make your own ink jesus christ <laughs> each page needs teardrops bro these ideas are crazy these ideas are nuts <laughs> write it in german cursive Okay, we gotta decide on something. I'll do five pages, single space, handwritten letter. Uh, um, so I, I can write it in English, but then what? How do I translate it over to German? How do I do that? Just use Google Translate Take or something Take a picture like or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then print it And then too. print it yeah. in German. Both English and, you just yes, have both yes, copies, okay. yeah. Read the letter on camera, right? And I'll read it in English and in German, <laughs> and then potentially go visit Germany. We gotta get you a Dortmund jersey. Uh, we got to yeah. get you some sort yeah, of Dortmund Jer jersey. Yeah, Dermot, Maybe we yeah. find one online, at yeah. least in the meantime. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. I like that. Um, but can I say something, though? Yeah, go for uh, it. This is regarding Dortmund. Um, yeah. So they did beat PSV, who were unbeaten at the time. But, you know, Dutch League. Yeah. Right? And the quarterfinal draw that they got, in my opinion, was the weakest team out, outside of Dortmund, Atletico. So it's like... Yes, Dorman definitely have deserved to go to the semis. I'm not saying that, but I am saying it's not like they've beaten England's best. Oh, no. It's not like they've beat Spain's best because Atletico, I do not consider them in the conversation as La Liga's best this season, bro. And so it's like Dorman have done very well to get here, but you know, I, 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 what I'm saying is you might want to reduce it from a five-page apology to like a two-page. I'm hearing you because, bro, even look at the group of death. You have a Newcastle United team. Underwhelming this year. Yep. Very underwhelming yep. this year, Newcastle. AC Milan, who won last year but came in second in their league this year. Transition period, in my opinion. And then PSG, who's been weird. They've been weird. They've been weird. And, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm, a, I'm with you, bro, but I'm a man of my word. I'm out of my word, but I agree. I and don't not, go too hard. And not only that, Dortmund themselves have underwhelmed immensely in the Bundesliga this year. Oh, they are awful. 17, yeah. 20, sorry, 23 points off of Leverkusen. Yeah. 23. It's kind of pathetic if you consider that Dortmund almost won it last year. So it's been a really bad title campaign for Dortmund. I do, again, I think... Every, all things considered, the teams that they face in the Champions League, they deserve to be in the semis. But my God, have they gotten very favorable draws. And you know what's funny? I'm not going to pick them in the semifinal either. Right? <laughs> Hell no, you shouldn't. <laughs> Nobody should. Moises <laughs> Reyes says, can we talk about Julian Brandt? Underrated as hecked. $2 and he scored a banger. 
Uh, he scored a good goal. It was yeah. a good goal against uh, O Block today. The uh, yeah, he blasted German. Uh, the German Martin Odegaard, in my opinion, man, they look like twins and uh, plays a very similar role. Um, very active offensively, and he's been great. Yeah, I know. Uh, absolutely, Julian Brandt, one of the most exciting attacking midfielders, I think, honestly, in Europe, simply because he, he really is like Odegaard, maybe even more offensive in the sense that Brandt doesn't defend whatsoever, True. and it's kind of cool that he just hovers right in that upper center uh, center part of the pitch just waiting looking for pockets to open up and obviously he has the class and the ability to find any Dortmund player on the run going out wide little uh, combining with little one twos Brandt's a joy to watch yeah. and it's why in the first leg when he started Felix and Mecha Terzic uh, I was like oh thank god Brandt's not starting yeah. that actually helps us but today Brandt showed his class yeah man his numbers are good once again this year I remember last year felt like he really made a big jump uh, and yeah. he's just continued that. He yeah. really has. So good for him. Angel Rodriguez, five dollars. Thank you, bro. I don't think Kyle Walker would make a difference tomorrow. And if Judas playing at his best, Madrid will win at the Etihad. Ooh, this is interesting because we will get into the previews for tomorrow real quickly because tomorrow we have two games, two absolute <sighs> dynamite matches tomorrow. Saying Kyle Walker won't make a difference is an insane. That is insane though. Because we saw what happened That's by him not playing last time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he'll absolutely make a difference. For me, the bigger question is what level does Jude play at? That's I'm the curious, interesting part. Because I don't think he was that impactful this last game. Uh, will he step up this time around and actually show his class that we know him to have? Or will he get kind of shut down once again? I'm curious to see. More specifically with Jude, I'm actually more comfortable saying that Kyle Walker will make a huge difference tomorrow because he'll be able to match Vinny's speed and Rodrigo's speed on the wings. Yeah, but that, that is a good point, though. If Jude is playing his best and he can partner up with either a Rodrigo or a Vinicius Jr. prime performance, then yeah, you should feel really good about going to the Etihad if you're a Madrid fan. Keenan Anderson, five dollars. Uh, Keenan's been watching the show for a while. I, I remember his name, so thank you, my friend. When was the last time we saw such a gap between UEFA Champions League and domestic league performance? Dorman is fifth in Bundesliga right now. Absolutely, and Atletico Madrid, we're 17 points off of Madrid in the league. We just got into third place, bro. Yeah, for a, se a yeah. semi-final Champions League team to be that far off in the title in the domestic league is yeah. pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking, have we seen something like that in a long time? Ah, mm. man, it's tough to consider. Uh, what about, I mean, when Inter Milan and AC Milan faced off last year, no, in the semi-final? They were both the top two. They were yeah. both off of Napoli. Well, yeah. well, uh, Chelsea, right when they won it yeah. uh, with Christian Pulisic, Thomas Tuchel, they weren't going for the title. Yeah, They weren't. I don't know exactly where they were in the league, but yeah, Chelsea was just in insane form. They had a good squad that year. And yeah, they, they played really good football, just like Dortmund are, right? Yeah. Again, the teams that they're facing, they're giving everything and they're earning this semifinal appearance 100%. It is just crazy that their domestic campaigns have been so poor. Dude, they've been bad. So man. bad, man. bad, man. No vocal <laughs> either. Um, <laughs> Joel Alvarado, did he apologize? <laughs> He's showing up late. La Grana <laughs> Quarter. No need to write. You guys have proper knowledge. Sometimes it happens. This is football heritage. That's one of the most truest things I've seen in this chat, man. That's so true. That is pure tr truth right there. Thank you, my friend, and sorry for your loss today because I do believe you're a Barca Lona fan. Villarreal is what people are mentioning as the team that made it to the semifinal. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that team, man. Yeah. And so <laughs> with that, let's transition to the last topic. Let's talk about, bro, no Bundesliga knowledge. Bro, I love you, but it's hurting, says David. What are you talking about? Give me specifics here. What are we missing out on that, that apparently uh, that we didn't mention? I'm seeing other comments saying that the... Basically, I think agreeing with David here in the sense that the Bundesliga is essentially underrated, mm. right? Most people really only consider English, Spanish teams. And then honestly, even like the top teams like Inter Milan or AC Milan, if they're in it, it's, I would say it actually is very common to underestimate Bundesliga teams in your UEFA competitions. Um, but I mean, that's actually a bigger conversation that could be had maybe at a later date. But I definitely do think that there is a shift in the top European football league landscapes as far as who's better between Spain and Germany, league-wise. Spain and Germany? Yeah. And I think overall, if you could like average out the teams, Germany might start actually being just a little bit better than La Liga because if outside of Real Madrid and Barcelona, dude, yeah. 
Spain doesn't have anybody anymore. Yeah. Atletico, this is the worst we've been in a while. Yeah. Girona is the next best team. Mm -hmm. Girona. And for as good as they've been this season, there's no way they'd be able to perform these type of competitions. You consider Bundesliga. RB Leipzig put up a hell of a fight against Real Madrid. Dortmund are in the semifinals of the Champions League. Bayer Leverkusen are unbeaten. They're in the Europa League. And they just lifted their first title in, what, over 100 yep. years, whatever that statistic is. German teams are definitely going off. Stuttgart's having an incredible yes, year this year. Yes, yes, Can yes. they continue that? So if you consider shifts with La Liga versus Bundesliga, I would definitely say Bundesliga is more on a rise and La Liga is more on a decline. Yeah, that's funny because that's what ultimately what David is trying to say. He says, I think Bundesliga is second best league. Dortmund is fifth, killing Milan, PSG, Atletico. Imagine fifth from Spain, Italy, England would do doing this. Right. That is true. Realistically, pro they probably can't. Yeah. And I, I actually agree with that statement. Yeah, Frankfurt won the Europa League two years ago. Yes. Um, no, these are great points. They're great mm -hmm. points. I think I just get a little scared because I remember last year people got so excited, so hyped about the Serie A being on this incredible so turnaround because they were all in what well, I believe this they all made final appearances in the Europe, Europe, European yeah. competitions yeah. but one of my boldest and best takes was that I predicted that no <laughs> Italian team would lift a trophy yeah. in Europe and it all came to be true their their class and quality was shown at the very end of the day the gap was clear and we haven't heard from them since man mm -hmm. and once again they had a pretty bad uh, European competition I would say this time around outside of like Atalanta I think is doing really good uh, doing but in the well. Champions League we're not seeing much of uh, an Italian uh, impact so I agree um, I just get a little scared wanting to praise Bundesliga because the biggest take I had with Serie A was that they had favorable draws. They just kind of got lucky overall. And I mean, that's what Dortmund has had a lot of luck in mm -hmm. is the draw they've had Absolutely. leading up to the semifinal, the Champions League now. Yeah. So I'm just saying I'm a little hesitant to go all the way there, but I do see what, what point you guys are trying to make. All right, so let's preview tomorrow's games. Let's finish off with that. Let's talk about tomorrow's bangers between Real Madrid and Manchester City and then Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. This has clearly been the best quarterfinal uh, matchups we've seen in the Champions League, I think maybe ever, with how high scoring these games have been. Tomorrow, ex uh, I'm expecting to see uh, just as likely of a performance from these two yeah. incredible matchups, man. Yeah. Uh, Real Madrid, Manchester City, man. At the Etihad, 3 3 going in. We already mentioned it before in our past videos after we reacted to it, but man. I'm going Manchester City on this one. Yeah. I think they have the clear advantage going into this match. De Bruyne was going to be healthy. Kevin, Kyle Walker is back. Perhaps Nathan Ake. The front line is cooking. They just smacked Luton 5-1. Yeah, I feel really good about Manchester City's chances going into this match. It is going to take a masterful performance from Real Madrid, and they are capable of that. But I will say, if, Manchester, if, if Real Madrid comes out of this game with a result and in the semifinals... It might be one of the most impressive results from Real Madrid that I've seen Ooh. maybe in my lifetime, man. Oh, uh, because yes. I know Real Madrid is so, they're, they're so well known for this. This is their class. This is what their history is. But just looking at individual performances, going to the Etihad where Manchester City never loses and going to a place where they lost 4-0 just a year ago and flipping the result around would say so would just be incredible bro it would be another landmark another mm. big moment in Real Madrid's incredible history yes. and I, I truly would be surprised if they managed to pull it off but I'm going Manchester City dude honestly amazing take because you look at this Real Madrid side against Manchester City objectively Real Madrid is the underdog right Manchester City are the reigning champions they're trying to win an unprecedented fourth Premier League title in a row which would mark them as the greatest English team ever yeah and Right now, Real Madrid's squad is very young. And all things considered, you could say inexperienced compared to the team or to the Real Madrid teams that used to win these type of games, right? I mean, you don't have Karim Benzema anymore. You still have players like Luka Modric, but they are not major players anymore. They're on the bench. You know, they come on and they help out this younger team. Whereas when you look at Manchester City, it's pretty much all veterans, all experience, all players in their prime. But for players like Real Madrid, you have Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. who are still trying to craft a legacy for themselves. Yeah, so you take all that yeah. narrative into account, Real Madrid are the underdogs, and it, it, like by far too. Mm -hmm. So if they do get a result, I agree, it would be massive. One of the greatest Real Madrid victories 
in their recent history, mm -hmm. by far, I completely agree, bro. Yeah, that, that's why I'm so eager for this match, man, because yeah. the atmosphere is going to be insane and the storylines and narratives are going to be crazy. Let me see what you guys are saying about this matchup. I'm seeing uh, Anthony Tarp say, currently in Madrid and all I've learned is not to celebrate Dortmund goals at a bar. It sounds like you're in a pickle, my friend. That sounds crazy. Uh, <laughs> what else we got? Um Wait, what happened at the yeah, bar? What happened man? at the bar, bro? What happened there? <laughs> what happened at the goddamn bar? <laughs> Tell us, Anthony. Um, what else we got? Blaugrana Cortes says, Man City have to stop Rodrigo and Jude, and the rest will fall apart step by step. Damn, he's planning Real Madrid's downfall. Makes it's hard sense. to do that, though. Yeah. That's the thing. It's hard to do that. In theory, if you do that, you do win the game, but even the yeah. best defenders will struggle against Bellingham, Rodrigo, Vinicius. Yes. Uh, Abbas says, hopefully Real Madrid will, will win, inshallah. Um, absolutely, absolutely. I, they I, have a they, good they have a chance. chance. They have a chance, but I just man. think Manchester City is the overall better team no. still, and will edge Madrid yep. at, right. the, at the end. I'm also going Manchester City. I cannot wait. We will be live streaming tomorrow after that game, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. going to be crazy. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for, yeah. that, for that draw. And you know what's crazy, man? The lowest scoring game now going into the quarterfinal matchups is Arsenal Bayern Munich. <laughs> uh, four goals combined here, whereas Real Madrid was three and three. Uh, yeah. uh, this is pretty crazy. Four goals overall, but now we have Bayern Munich facing off against Arsenal at the Allianz Arena. Arsenal coming off of a really disappointing result against Aston Villa at yeah. the weekend. Yeah. And Bayern Munich losing the title this weekend to Bayern Leverkusen. Maybe mentally that has an impact, but still hosting a major, major match. Where are you at on this one? I'm a little scared for Arsenal because they played their best squad against a decent Aston Villa side and they lost fair and square. You consider that this match is going to be in Germany against you know a very very experienced Bayern Munich side who has lost the Bundesliga so this is all they have going for them this season I feel like they're going to give everything whereas Arsenal if, if they do lose tomorrow they still are in in they're still in contention for the Premier League yeah. right they're right there so I just feel like a desperate Bayern against a slightly out of form Arsenal and I think it's a scary prospect if, if you're trying to support Arsenal. In yeah, this match. it is. No, dude, absolutely. I agree. I, the the context going into this match is is is, is what scares me. Yeah. Um. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, I want to flip. I want to flip. flip, but I'm 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 gonna stick with the Arsenal prediction. I think Arsenal can pull this off. They still have, even when they're not playing well, one of the best offenses in the world. And very similar to Dortmund, Bayern Munich have very inconsistent defensive plays. So if Arsenal Damn. can just break the line once or twice, they will score. God, that is right, guaranteed. Right, bro. You're in my ear right now, bro. <laughs> Fucking, it, let me think. Let it, me think. It's bro. guaranteed. But you know what's also a guarantee? A Bayern Munich goal, right? Like, they're going to get a goal as well. So, honestly, I see this one as a shootout more so than a tactical battle. Yeah, I, I think it's similar to Real Madrid winning at the Etihad. If Arsenal gets a result here, this is history, bro. Yeah. Ten years. I mean, this is one of the biggest results in their history if they manage to pull it off against this giant of a team in the Champions League. For the sake of the narrative, for the sake of maybe a personal bias, I want to see Arsenal do it. I want to see Arsenal oh, I would, do it, man. Uh, see I want to see it, Arsenal do it more specifically because at the beginning of the season we had a conversation about where would Bayern Munich end if they played in the Premier League. Where were they? Uh, what, what what place would they land in? And you said fourth, I said third, mm -hmm. but I think we both agree that they would be under Arsenal. We got heavily criticized for that take early on in the season. Arsenal wins this game, it proves that we were right. Yeah. So I'm going Arsenal. And I think it's on the books, man. Bayern Munich, I mean, we've seen it. What, they're 14 points off mm -hmm. of Leverkusen or what, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like, they've been, by their standards, very poor this season. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just, I do think Arsenal is the better side. It's just tough to do it on the road considering that it's a draw right now. It's 2 2. But yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with Arsenal. It would be history for them, but they do have the talent. Yeah. They have what it takes to pull this off. I don't think it takes. Uh, it's not going to take a miracle, yeah, you know? Yeah. They can do this, so I'm sticking with Arsenal. God damn. Anthony Tarr finally responded. He says, everyone thought I was German. Uh, started speaking Spanish in an American accent. It did not go well. I averted disaster by buying a beer for the man who confronted me. That's smart. You went, smart to, an, you went to an Atleti bar that, or something? Yeah, right. Or yeah. <laughs> He's cheered for Dortmund in a Spanish bar. So, yeah, he's probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, what are we seeing from you guys? Sorry, Nelson, for coming for you, but I took an L with Barcelona. Says Roger Rivera. <laughs> Finally, oh, yeah, man. Roger, Finally, man. we're on the same terms. Good <laughs> lord, bro. Uh, Donnie Licious says, "Hey guys, love the content. Been a fan of Atletico since their underdog run in 2014. Wow. But to be honest, I feel it's time to follow another club." <laughs> 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 I don't necessarily blame you, but uh, yeah, I, you can't I, I back that. I definitely get but. what you're saying. I don't back that leaving Atletico, but I, I get what you're saying. God damn. Uh, <laughs> Ashley Molefi says Real Madrid has to win this game in order to be mentally fit for a Clasico. Um, that is coming up for you guys. That is coming up for you guys. So it will be important. CPAPs, Bayern's morale and team spirit must be damaged after losing the Bundesliga. Arsenal, do a good performance. 3 1 to Arsenal. That's yeah. kind of where I'm thinking. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Um, David, even I talked about my Bundesliga love. I'm not sure with that. Bayern missed many players and Sane have to play injured. So David, who backs the Bundesliga, is you know a little hesitant about what Bayern might be able to do in this game. I agree. Uh, you forgot my super chat. Let me go find it. Let me go find it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Boo Pinder says, Spreech beat Josh. <laughs> equals please speak German. We're going to have a hard time with the Deutsch, Fuck, man. dude. How the hell am I supposed to say that? Hold on. I'm going to look that up on Google. I want to see how that, how that sounds. I think it's Sprich bitte Deutsch. Something like okay, that. Okay, let's see how far away you are from that. <laughs> that sounds uh, accurate. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. right, hold on one more time. Sprich bitte. Oh, shit. Sp Sprich. Sprich bitte. Sprich bitte. There you go. Sprich bitte. Please speak German. Sprich bitte. Sprich bitte. I like that. I All can right. do it. I give, can do it. Give Reynoso a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna, be, it's gonna be brutal, man. <laughs> Good German, my friend. Guys, any other questions? What do we have here? Fernando Cruz, five dollars. He says, "What if Bayer Leverkusen were in this year's <sighs> Champions League? I know, man. How far I do you wish. think they would have reached? I wish. I wish they were." We talked about this off camera, just like imagine if this Leverkusen team was in the Champions League. It's honestly a miss, not just for Leverkusen. I'm talking about like UEFA is missing yeah. out on this, bro. Yeah. The world oh, the is money. missing out. Yeah, the money, like the 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 draw it's that an unbeaten question. Leverkusen going into the knockout stage would have had. Ridiculous. It's a miss that Leverkusen just didn't finish higher up the league table last year. But that's just it is what it is, man. It sucks. But I mean. Where did it, they finish? They finished in fourth, right? I think fourth? so. Yeah, I think it was fourth. Leipzig was the third team. Yeah, Leipzig was third. So let's say they would have landed in Leipzig spot instead, okay, right? Okay. So they would have faced off against Manchester City in the round of 16. Leipzig? That, no, Madrid. Round of, round of 16. City faced uh, Leipzig in the round of 16. Oh, oh you're, right, you're, right, you're right. 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 Yeah. yeah, they would have faced off against. Oh, damn. Yeah. That would have been a hell Leverkusen, of a match. Leverkusen, Real Madrid in the round of 16 uh, would have been the, the, the matchup. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't them. know. I don't know. But that matchup would have been crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, if they had Dortmund's line, they'd easily be in the semifinals. They would have been Atletico. Yeah. They yeah. would have been on the yeah, They would have been Atletico. They would have been PSV. They would have yeah. been the favorite against PSG. They could have gone to the Champions League final. That's crazy. Yeah, they would. Yeah, that's I crazy. would actually consider them favorites against PSG if they were playing. Yeah, yeah 100%. That, that's insane. 100%. Yeah. And I wonder if they would have still been unbeaten. That, there's no way. And the Champions League. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Champions, Champions League, there's no way. Yeah, there's even no like way. group stage, maybe you lose one. There it is. Leverkusen was six last year. Oh, Bundesliga shit. has four spots for Champions League. That's true. That's My true. Goodness. I blanked out. Uh, that's true. Um, I got Bayern winning because the Alliance Arena is a scary place to go coming from Barca fans. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why I am hesitant for Arsenal. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. Again, especially since Bayern Munich are desperate for something this season. It's just been a mess at Munich. Yeah. But the fact that they still have a chance to go to the semifinals, it might redeem a lot of the mistakes they've made this year. Yeah. Hey, ja, BVB, man. These BVB fans are finally showing up. Yeah. Shout out to y'all. Yeah, shout out to Dorman, man. They, Don, they, they yeah. played really well. Yeah. Donnie Licious, uh, that might be Daniel Malin. What potential <laughs> game do you guys think would have the craziest sights? I think a World Cup final between Brazil and Argentina. Oh, uh, yeah. It, I, I hope mean, that happens like during our... The craziest game, I'm thinking Barcelona Madrid Champions League final would be crazy. Yeah. Um, I think Brazil Argentina would be crazy. I think Brazil England would be crazy in the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, fuck, man, what other matches create that much? I think Brazil-Argentina is like the pinnacle. You of, think so? Of like finals. Because if they were to meet in a World Cup, that would be, I mean, it, it's like storybook. You, you consider they're both of their histories. They both have one of the most 
decorated histories in the World Cup specifically. You also consider the amount of legends that those two countries have produced. They bleed football, bro. Yeah, they yeah. bleed it. So I think a final between those two countries in a World Cup setting I, I would be incredible. And I hope it happens before I'm like, you know, 60 and can't move or something We have like to that. at some point see a, like a crazy oh, matchup like that. I think oh. so. I, I think so. At some point we have to see that, man. Yeah. Blaugrana Quarter says, Arsenal 4, Bayern 2. If Bayern win, I'll unsubscribe you guys that's crazy <laughs> is that a punishment for you or damn something? bro damn bro <laughs> shit man. uh sorry saltero says chinos thank Appreciate you my friend chinos. um daniel lizarraga i love saying that guy's last name i have faith Bayern munich that we could win arsenal because we have a world-class striker that we could depend on and arsenal doesn't very true they have uh, world-class true. wingers though el catch talks five dollars thank you bro man city founded year of the dragon will win this year at Year of the Dragon and Pep Guardiola pig year. Okay. Pig and Dragon, friends, Manchester City champ. You get the logic there? I think so, actually. Yep. Yeah. Year of the Dragon. It's the Year of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> they were also founded, right? They okay. Founded yeah. Year of the Dragon. And apparently, dragons are friends with pigs. And oh, Pep's, a, Pep's a pig year. Pig's a pig year. Yeah. Oh, wow, man. Okay. Okay. I mean, I do think the stars are aligning the for Manchester City. The stars are literally man. aligning. I do think so. I do think so. <laughs> God damn, man. Morata better not meet me on the street. <laughs> oh, man. I do miss Diego Costa. I yeah. will say that. Yeah, who has been y'all's best striker in the last 20 years? Is it Diego Costa? Was Costa it, for sure. Uh, fucking Falcao at his peak? Falcao would it, have uh, been if he stayed Fernando there longer. Torres, was it, uh, Falcao would have been if he stayed there longer. Yeah. Tor and same with Torres. Torres was only there for a little bit, you know, and then he went to Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, if Holland doesn't score, how would you guys rate his performance this year this far? I would... I would for reference, I'm going to do a uh, Reynoso Mountain update this weekend. So I'm looking to see at what players stand out in these huge, huge quarterfinal matchups. If Holland doesn't score, he definitely drops in overall ranking. Right now, I have him in the third tier, the third highest tier. Um, but he's going to drop to five or six if I don't see him produce some sort of special moment mm -hmm. or some goals in these big matches. But he'll still be on the mountain, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. I that that's a tough question though because Holland is just goal scoring, right? Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't have to do anything else on the pitch, and if he gets the goals, then he's doing his job. So I think that that that's a tough question. Yeah, it's a tough question. Talk about Cole Palmer this year, my boy Cole Palmer. Man, you said something so so real to me one time about Cole Palmer, the most English looking player <laughs> I've ever seen, the most English player, bro. He's a bloke for sure. Off the streets, um straight into the fucking pitch and just an absolute baller in his first full season what did what were it 19 goals 10 assists is what i'm saying yeah. some madness um pretty crazy that manchester city can offload a talent like that <laughs> and he can go on to be the best player for a team like chelsea and you know they don't feel the weight of his absence i think that's pretty crazy that yeah you you word it like that and that that's insane <laughs> What's interesting, though, is that I wonder if Palmer would have had the same impact in Pep Guardiola's system. No, I don't no, he think wouldn't. he wouldn't. I don't think he would have. Yeah. Um, Boo Pinder, $2, says, can we see a Der Klassiker final? We do have to talk about that because that is a potential now, man. The, the path is crazy. Dortmund defeats PSG, which I'm really f excited for because when yeah. it comes to Champions League football, I'm always more excited about the semifinals than the final itself because yeah. those are the matches where you get to see them go away and at mm -hmm. home in front of their fucking fans, yeah. whereas the final, although this one's going to be really good at the Wembley yeah, Stadium, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, is going to be great, but usually the final doesn't live up to it in terms of atmosphere. So the semifinals I'm really hyped for. That Dortmund atmosphere, welcoming in Mbappe, and the Pacte Princess, you know, hosting Dortmund is going to be for a, make for a crazy matchup. <sighs> Dortmund supersedes that. They somehow get past that. And Bayern figures it out too. Uh, their Classico would be crazy. It'd be crazy. There's no way. That's got to be the least likely final, though. It has to be. I'm talking like the bookies out there. They're like, there's a 1% chance that that specific... Maybe that one of them gets there, right? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But both of them getting there? Oh, no, so is, is it less likely than... Let me see. Barnes at home. Less likely than Real Madrid. Dortmund. That's the coolest yeah, thing I'd I, find. I think it yeah. is less likely because I would say Madrid have a better chance of going to the final. Okay. I think it's just, I think it's the least likely option. Yeah. God, <laughs> yeah, they're right, man. Then that would be insane <laughs> to see that happen. Yeah. Uh, El Rey Velez, $5. Thank you, bro. That feeds us. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, brother. Hi, guys. Just showing love for the pods. Greeting from Alaska. I love that. That might be the first Alaska yeah, viewer we've ever absolutely. heard of. Uh, 
Do y'all got any teams up there, man? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no MLS squads up there in the last I don't think it's US. They don't have anything. I don't think they have any sports teams out there. Damn, Not even like man. college. Then what is what are you doing up there? El Rey Velas, tell us in the chat. What are you doing in a, in Alaska, bro? And is there a time difference? I'm actually huge time difference, probably. It's probably like yeah. what, four hour difference? Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Maybe more uh, than six. Who's at number one on the mountain? You will find out this yeah, weekend, my friend. I'm already question. working on the list. I think it's really, really interesting. Go back and watch the video if you want to see where they stood two months ago. A lot has happened yeah, yeah. since then. Uh, Bellingham hasn't played as as well recently. Mohamed Salah has uh, actually lacked a lot of goals recently. Yeah, yeah. Foden's playing really good. Rodri's playing amazing. Who steps up into that top, top player right now? The Ballon d'Or front runner, if you want to call it, because... It's going to be a really good conversation. That video comes out this week. And Fernando Cruz says, Keylor Navas over, Dol over Dolaruma. Dolaruma. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. Thing is, dude, I was thinking about it watching the Barcelona PSG game, and Navas never never made me as anxious as Donnarumma has made me these past two games, bro. Mm. Donnarumma has actually scared me a little bit, especially with this performance in that first leg against Barca. Navas never made me feel like that, bro. Yeah. He had his mistakes, and that's fine. It happens to all keepers, but... Nava still had an element of grit, I think, yeah. or confidence that oh, there's yeah. times where I feel like Donnarumma just doesn't care or is just a little lazy at times, man. It really worries me. I actually would have gone with prime Keylor Navas. Keylor Navas now probably isn't the smartest option over true, Donnarumma, true, true. but um, I do think uh, in their primes, I'm taking Navas personally, man. Yeah. He's part of the reason why the Real Madrid won those Champions League titles. Exactly. I was just about to oh, make perfect. that point. Just about to make that point. Prime Navas is a Champions League winner. He's one of the best goalkeepers of the 2010s yeah Donnarumma is just the next generation but yeah I think not as good at yeah. least at least right now not as good yeah I agree um so then let, we just talked about what's the least likely final what's the most likely final then the most likely looking one? at it right now has to be PSG Man on City. the right side and then I would say Man City yeah. on the left Man City PSG dude yeah. that'd be a good final it would be a fun one damn that'd be really really fun damn two you know heavily funded clubs Going at it oh, with Mbappe on one side and Holland on the other. Hey! Oh, okay, okay. damn, that'd be crazy. <laughs> Would that be the first time? No, PSG second time when they yeah. lost to Bayern uh, yeah, a few years ago. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, I mean like Holland, Mbappe. Oh, yeah, that'd be the first time. That'd be the first time, right? Um, in a I, final, but did they, they face off in the Champions League when it was Dortmund, PSG at any point? There might have been a chance they faced off in the Champions League. It would have had to be last year, though, because last year was Holland's first year. Right. So. It didn't happen. No, that that didn't happen at all last year. I don't think it did. No, no, no. Yeah, so this would be the first time. Wow, man. Unless Norway played France in a friendly or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Monaco days, neither. No. Uh, Holland wasn't on the map like that yet, I think. Um, PSG Man City final would be... Is, is what I'm rooting for from this point forward. Same, but same. No, no uh, it, it, it's what I think will happen. It's also what I want. Because yeah. I think it'd be the best final kind of for everybody. The narratives at stake would be really cool. PSG still trying to get their first Champions League title with all the billions that they put into the squad. It's also like a weird transitionary period for PSG over the last couple of years where they have Luis Enrique now trying to build an actual squad rather than rely on star players. That's such a cool narrative. But then you still have prime killing Mbappe as the star for PSG. So that star power is still there. And then, of course, Manchester City, as I already said before earlier in the stream, they're, they're going for history, bro. They're, they're trying to mark themselves as one of the best clubs ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 When you put it like that, bro, the match sounds crazy. crazy. Asa Gisa does not want it. Nah, guys, come on. We need a bit of tradition in a final, not just money. If you're looking for tradition, then the final should be Dortmund. Dortmund's traditional is... Versus... Versus, I mean, I mean, any of I Arsenal, guess, Madrid, Bayern. I guess Bayern or Madrid. Yeah, Bayern, Bayern Madrid, or Madrid. If you yeah. want a tradition. Um, Rodri or Jude, in parentheses, I'm from India, dude. It's 3.30 a.m. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, Rodri or Jude, I'm going, fuck. Oh, Jesus. I'm, go I'm, I'm going Jude. If I had to build a team, uh, I'm going Jude Bellingham. Fuck, man. Like, number one you pick. just threw that at us. <laughs> fuck, man. Uh, let me think. Rodri or Drood, if I had the option. I mean, ah, is it for just one single season or is it for career? Like, Jude has 10 more years in the bag of his, of like this level of play. Rodri's like 26, I think, 27. Yeah. Uh, but Rodri hasn't lost in an entire year. And I just feel so safe when Rodri's playing. I'm actually going to go Rodri on this one. Okay, yeah. I mean, Rodri. he's a 
one of the best midfielders yeah. ever. <laughs> He's yeah. a fantastic player. I'm going to go Rodri. Uh, Mbappe and Holland met when he was at Dortmund in 2019-2020. Oh, That's what we were looking for. Okay. So then PSG Dortmund 2019-2020 P- uh, Champions League season. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. But definitely wasn't in a uh, definitely different. final or different, semifinal. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's crazy. River says, who's Saltero's team in Spain? Do you have a team in Spain? <laughs> uh, the one and only Atletico Madrid, oh, my man. The one and only. Hey, Andre Velas responded to us. Uh, no sports teams up here in Alaska. Yeah. Currently, it's 2 p.m. up here, so just three hours behind okay, us. Okay. Damn, man. That's a... Uh, is your El Rey Vélez, is it El Reynoso Vélez, perhaps? Uh, that'd be nice. But hey, thank you, man, for the donation. And guys, thank you all for an incredible stream. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, a banger of a stream with so Producer excited. Rudd back and two big matches. It'll be a traditional approach to streams. It's going to be amazing. Meet us here once again because we're going to have, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be scenes. Oh, if Manchester City wins or Real Madrid pulls off a crazy result, can be losing our minds out here so guys make sure to join us tomorrow thank you all for participating in the chat and we'll see you guys in 24 hours peace, peace.